In this video, we're going to look at the importance of background choice and depth of field and how the look of your background can really influence the look and, and feel of your shots. We're also going to take a closer look at image sharpness and how to achieve consistently sharp images when you photograph close-ups of insects. If you want to take really good shots of insects, I'd encourage you to set your alarm early and get out to your local reserves and find insects while they're inactive. So one of the big advantages of taking photographs this time of day is that insects are, are less active. And so I can set my tripod up, I can get my shot composed nicely, um, but I can also tidy up my composition. As you can probably tell, there's a lot of grasses growing up around the, this, this butterfly. Um, and I've got my shot composed already on live view and, and it's looking okay, but there's a lot of mess, there's a lot of distraction around it. And I want to tidy the frame up. Um, so I'm gonna just remove some of these grasses from around it. Be very careful about doing this. You don't want to disturb the, the butterfly at all. So I'm doing this very, uh, very kind of slowly and methodically. And it's just going to tidy up my composition. And already looking at the, the picture on my live view, it's already looking a lot cleaner. So one of the big advantages of being able to use a tripod when you're photographing butterflies and, and insects is that you can focus via live view. And that's a really, really useful thing because live view allows you to focus with much greater precision. So I've got my butterfly up on the screen at the minute. It's, it's kind of roughly focused, but I'm just going to move the focusing point just over its eyes, and, which is obviously the most important part of any, any creature is to focus right towards its eyes. And then I'm going to magnify in and then manually focus and just fine tune my focusing very carefully. So this is my minute adjustments now and placing it very precisely on the insect's eyes. And you just can't focus with that level of precision when you're looking through the viewfinder. And so I would encourage you to use live view focusing for your close-up photography whenever it's practical. So the sun's just popped out finally this morning from the, uh, from the fog. And um, I've always loved silhouettes. I love the simplicity of silhouettes. And I've seen an opportunity here of selecting a slightly lower angle and silhouetting this, this butterfly against the sun. Um, so in order to get the sun perfectly circular, I've had to opt for the lens's largest aperture of 4.5. You can see the effect it has. If I, if I change my aperture now and make it smaller, you can see the effect it has on the sun and you lose that kind of perfect circle and you lose the, the shape of, of the sun. And so you have to shoot with the lens wide open, which means your depth of field is exceptionally shallow. So again, focusing as always with close-up photography becomes critical. And I'm zooming in using live view. I'm being very, very careful about my focusing. And then I'm using a, a trigger release just to take the photograph. So I'm not having to physically touch the camera in any way. And the result is it's, it's quite striking and dynamic. So it's still quite early in the morning um, and I'm still looking for subjects at the minute um, and I found uh, another blue butterfly and it's just perching on a, a, a scabious flower which looks really nice but the light's really dull, it's, it's very flat, very uninteresting and my, my pictures are looking a little bit flat as a result. So one thing that I, I, I tend to use is LED lighting um, because it's, it's kind of a nice consistent form of light and I can preview its effect before I take the photograph and what I'm doing is I'm just going to hold it into position just point it down and just just put a little bit of light onto the butterfly I can still look at my live view image and make sure and regulate the effect I'm getting before taking a photograph it's just lifting the butterfly slightly, helping it to stand out from its background and just bringing the shot alive. And these little handheld devices are really useful for, for macro photography. And um, it's really making a difference in this instance and in these kind of conditions. So the sun's come out, it's quite warm now. So I thought I'd take a, a quick break just to talk to you about the importance of using a tripod. Um, I take a tripod wherever I go. It's a really integral part of my close-up photography. Although you can shoot handheld and you can achieve really good results handheld, 
whenever it's practical to use a tripod, I would really encourage you to do so because it's, it's going to allow you to focus with a lot more precision. You can use live view, which is going to aid your focusing and it's also going to give you stability. It will also allow you to think a little bit more about your framing. I think everyone associates a tripod just with stability, but it just allows you to slow down and think about your background choice and those things will really help you achieve better close-up images. I would encourage you to go for a design that will be positioned quite easily low down. So for instance, this tripod hasn't got a center column, so I can place it very low to the ground very, very quickly and very easily. But there are lots of designs out there that are, that are specifically constructed for low level work. And if you're gonna do a lot of close-ups, whether it's flowers or insects, whatever it might be, just be very conscious of that before you, you buy your tripod. There's some really nice colourful heather here and um, there's a couple of grasshoppers amongst it and it's, it's, I think there's going to be a, a really nice shot here hopefully. Um, the problem is it's a very kind of chaotic environment. There's, there's lots going on, there's lots of kind of flowers and grasses and vegetation. And in order to take a nice picture of this grasshopper, I somehow need to isolate it from its surroundings. Now depth of field is naturally very shallow when you shoot at higher magnifications. And I suppose the instinct is to, to kind of select a, a smaller aperture in order to generate a larger depth of field. But the problem with doing that is you, you bring a lot of surrounding vegetation into focus when you're photographing close-ups of, of insects. And I don't want to do that, so I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to select quite a, a large aperture. Um, I'm going to select an aperture of f4. So I create a very shallow depth of field and just focus very carefully on the insect's eyes. And I can see that the insect is, is acceptably sharp, but the foliage around it is drifted out, pleasantly out of focus. And, and that's an effect I quite like. It helps the subject pop from its surroundings. And um, it's something I would really suggest you try. You know, a shallow depth of field isn't something to be scared of. You do have to focus very precisely, but you can create some really nice, quite creative, artistic looking results. So um, don't, don't you know, be scared to, to kind of experiment with your aperture selection. And certainly a shallow depth of field can work particularly well with, with close-ups of insects. So it's the end of the series. I hope you've enjoyed the advice I've given you and found it beneficial. Uh, don't forget to check out the WEX blog for more videos, technique and tips.